Hi, welcome back to the Research Methodology Group to Dr. Littling YouTube channel. And uh, today I am following up with the previous episodes on doing systematic literature review. And today's focus will be to help you develop search strategy, fishing relevant literature for your research. Let's begin. So there are four types of search you need to uh, you have you sometimes uh, will encounter um, in your systematic literature review. They are scoping search, pilot search, main search, and supplementary search. So I mark here search like a fisherman um, because imagine a scenario that you need to fish. You send out this um uh drone to charter the water to see what's there and then you go out with some tools uh, your fishing uh, kit and you go to test if they are sturdy enough to fish and then after you check the water check your tool you send out the boat you sail to fish and when you have your bulk of fish you check what the best type of fish you attach a gps to them and put them back to water so you are going to find there a bigger group of good fish in the water so that's just an imaginary scenario for fishermen to catch fish that will be similar like you um, to search for relevant literature in your research so first uh, we let's go to look at this table before going in detail about different types of um, search. So 5W1H um, is a very popular model to identify key elements of an event to describe an event. So uh, it involves when, where, who, why, what, and how. Um, so this will be the takeaway for you to after attending today's uh, tutorial you will understand 5w1h different elements or aspects of the four types of search in literature review in systematic literature review particularly so as you already know that i am doing a systematic literature review on the topic of youth entrepreneurship education research so um, it's, it's a three-stage research and it includes 12 phases. And you can see from this uh, graph that the first phase is scoping search. The phase three is pilot search. The phase four is main search. And the phase seven is a supplementary search. So if you consider the order of its appearance in the research flow, it is first scoping searching ends with the supplementary search of course it's not linear but um in general if you do a systematic literature review from the beginning to the end you are um it is possible that you encounter them in this order but sometimes you also go back to re repeat this cycle or you repeat certain steps of this cycle so that's look at the scoping search first as i mentioned in the previous tutorial that scoping search helps you to test the water to see what kind of systematic literature review studies already exist in the topic you selected so how to charter the water using scoping search you can um, use google scholar to begin and uh, you are going to have your sole keyword in our case it's entrepreneurship education and you add it with the review so if you are doing let's say um aids research um let's say um you no let's take another example <laughs> let's say you are doing research about learning performance and uh, reading frequency and you can type these two so keywords adding review to the end and then you just search on google scholar and in common practice you can check 20 to 5 50 per, um, 20 to 50 pages of the results 
and uh, especially pay attention to cited by because that will tell you how popular, how frequently cited um, a, a work is. So always go to the highly cited ones first. Ideally, you are going to have a table summarizing all the existing systematic literature review studies, and you can compare different aspects of it. And that will give you an idea um, or to find your research questions based on it. So we can fill in the first column under scoping search. So it happens first, even before the, um, before the official uh, review start, starts. And you can use Google Scholar. And uh, in our case, I was the principal investigator. So I was doing this work. Um, after I got the results, I assigned the reading task to different team members. So, but when I was doing the scoping search, I was doing it alone. And why we needed to do this? Because we need to test our research questions to see if it is really worth of further investigation, if it has been covered by previous review studies, if it is to what degree. So from there, you can add more or change the direction. So as I mentioned, in this stage, you look for systematic literature review studies on the topic or in the field. And then you how to do it, you use the sole or topical keywords and browse. Let's now move to the second search type, that's pilot search. So pilot search, you use some initial keywords and search terms to search on certain databases of your choice. In our case, I use Scopus and ProQuest. So here is a view of initial keywords I had. So how to develop these initial keywords that you see so many on the screen here. Um, you, if you are working alone, you can brainstorm with yourself or with existing literature. So you look at their keywords, their abstracts, and search for keywords there, and you just aggregate them. I highly suggest you actually umbrella or cluster keywords so that they bear more meaning to you instead of just putting them randomly on the screen. So as you can see here, I, I put three clusters to group my keywords. One is population-related keywords, one is context-related keywords, one is interested phenomenon-related keywords. So if you work with a group of other people, uh, you can brainstorm with each other and do similar thing like uh, each person brainstorm with the literature, come up with some keywords and discuss within the team. Um, there, are, there are many different ways, but the important thing is you have a set of initial keywords you agreed on, and then you just go to the then you just go to fine tune um, you just go to the pilot search and uh, use the database use the keywords you have and uh, fine tune the keywords based on the results you have generated from the pilot search so as you can see here we can fill in the second column um, pilot search comes after scoping search. You can go to um, one or two databases to, to fine tune your keywords. And you can do this alone or with your team members. And uh, the purpose is to test and fine tune the keywords. And uh, you have to look at the number of search results across databases to understand uh, um, if, if there's existing enough existing literature for further action, for further review. Uh, you also need to look at their keywords, titles, some abstracts briefly to add some uh, relevant keyword, keywords that you missed in your initial keywords. So how to do it? You use initial keyword set to search in databases of your selection. The third search type is a main search. So 
you now choose a broader selection of databases that are relevant to your topic, to your field. And uh, in this case, we use six, six databases. And then you create search strings by database. Um, because different academic databases using, they use different types of the syntax and uh, Boolean operators. And thus, when you use different databases, you have to customize your keywords to be umbrellaed by different syntaxes and uh, Boolean operators. That's why um, this is a very important step for uh, doing advanced search using search strings in academic databases. So you apply the primary filters and uh, so after you get the result from advanced search, you apply some uh, filters available on the database. They are often like publication years, publication language, subjects, keywords, education levels, etc. And once you have the filter result, you're satisfied with it, you download the bibliographic data, uh, either in CSV file or IS file for further um, screening. So to note that the search stream you are going to use in advanced search in academic databases, they can compose, uh, they can construct different um, aspects. So, uh, one is the, the keywords. Uh, let me see if I can use a pen here. Yes. Um, one is that you, you use the keywords that you have, right? That's the keywords you have. And then you have this Boolean operators like uh, quotation marks, like uh, the truncation here. Okay. And then you have uh, this. This is uh, syntax. Um, very unique to the Scopus database, for instance, uh, or it is also shared with uh, some other acad uh, academic databases. But anyway, this is syntax. It is short for abstract. So as you can see that in this string, you have abstract, and that is a syntax code. And then you have the Boolean operator here, you have keywords. So these are main major three elements into your search string. You are also recommended to um, construct your search strings in different concept blocks. So for instance, I have two concept blocks here. This concept blocks, this first concept block is about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship education, right? And the second concept block is about education level, or educational setting I'm interested in. So in this case, it's high school, secondary education. And then you have the final combination of these two blocks using AND to connect them. Then you are going to end up with this, uh, this um, full search string. And you just go to the database and uh, input it into the search string field and click search. Then you will get your result. So by now we can fill in the um, column under main search. It comes after Palo search. It is the major search part of your systematic literature review. And uh, you can find, you can conduct this uh, um, in databases of your selection by trying to cover uh, several instead of just one. And uh, you can rely on one person or the team members division of the tasks. And uh, you have to search deeply and widely for relevant literature. That's the major task of your study. And uh, you need to look at the publications on the topic. That's what you need to pay attention to. And uh, how to do it, you use fine-tuned keyword set to search in the selected databases. So next is supplementary search. After your major search, your main search, you still need to check the key references you have. And uh, there are two ways of, uh, um, you know, supplementary um, data searching. 
What sometimes is called citation chaining, but I prefer calling it snowballing. That's another way of saying it. It's very visual for me. So there are two types under it. There's one called a backward snowballing. That's to check the references of the key references you have. And another one is to, to um, do forward snowballing. So you check for um, who cited the key references you have using either Google scholars cited by statistics or using cited references search available at Web of Science. I also provide a link here um, from YouTube providing you the um, tutorial about how to do cited reference search in Web of Sci Science. So far, I can we can fill in the final column under supplementary search. So it comes at the end of uh, main search. You can you rely on key references and to search around it, and uh, it can be done by um, by the team uh, because sometimes the references are very long if you have many key references. And so in our case, we did it in in, in a team, but you can also do it alone. And uh, you can, why you need to do it? Because you, you want to track the key publications in the topic to add a more relevant ones that have been possibly missed in the main search. Of, and uh, what to look at, you need to look at publications cited by and citing the key publications. And how to do it, you first need to identify the key publications of your topic and search around them. Well, that's, that's it. That's today's uh, introduction to four such types in systematic literature review. I hope it can help you to form a reasonable, workable search strategy for your research. Thank you very much.